Good morning and welcome to South Armour Baptist Church online service. Welcome to our very last Sunday service of October 2020 and um, an extra special warm welcome to you as it gets quite cold outside, says Johnny the weatherman. Um, my name is Johnny and um, I'm going to be leading us in a time of worship this morning um, before Shaggy brings his sermon later on. Um, and I would like to welcome you as we gather to bring our worship um, to God this morning from our homes, um, but also as we seek to draw near to him. Um, and uh, the Bible does say that um, if we draw near to him, then he will draw near to us. So we draw near to him this morning and Lord, we ask you that you will draw near to us this morning in our homes and in the church as well as this stream is going out. Lord, we pray that your spirit will rest upon us as we bring worship to your name, as we glorify your name and as we seek to be your mouthpiece here on earth. Lord, make us active, make us ready to speak your word. And Lord, make us a witness in the places that we are. And Lord, bring us to a place where we can worship you constantly. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just going to bring a short part of a psalm, Psalm 104, and it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendour and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a garment, stretching out the heavens like a tent. He lays the beams of his chambers on the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He rides on the wings of the wind. He makes his messengers winds, his ministers a flaming fire. Let us bring our blessing to the Lord. Isn't that such an incredible gift that God has given us that we can bless his name? He's usually the one who blesses us, but we can bless his name. And the beautiful thing is we can bless his name when times are good and when things are going as we want them to. And we can bless his name when things are not going according to our plan because we know that God has a plan and because God is great he is clothed with splendor and majesty and nothing changes that the state we are in here on earth does not change how great our God is so let's sing our first song this morning blessed be your name so that we are ready to bless the Lord no matter what the times bring and no matter what happens to us knowing that God is much greater than all of it so please join me as we sing Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the
could be your name You give and take away You give and take away My heart will choose to say Lord, blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your name. And blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel, the one from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples of Jesus were all together. Simon Peter said to the others, I'm going fishing. We will come with you, they told him. So they went out in a boat, but all that night they did not catch a thing. As the sun was rising, Jesus stood at the water's edge but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then he asked them, Young men, haven't you caught anything? Not a thing, they answered. He said to them, Throw your net out on the right side of the boat and you will catch some. So they threw the net out and could not pull it back in because they had caught so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord! When Peter heard that it was the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken his clothes off and jumped into the water. The other disciples came to shore in the boat, pulling the net full of fish. They were not very far from land, about a hundred metres away. When they stepped ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and had some bread. Then Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you've just caught. Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net ashore full of big fish, a hundred and fifty-three in all. Even though there were so many, still the net did not tear. Jesus said to them, come, eat. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. So Jesus went over, took the bread and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This then was the third time Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from death. After they had eaten, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? Yes, Lord, he answered. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, he answered. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. A third time, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was sad because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? So he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. 
Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. So what does this historical account actually mean? Here are a couple of musical reminders. Fish, one pound fish, come and have a look. One pound fish, come and have a look. One pound fish, five pound, six pound, seven pound fish. One pound fish, very, very good. One pound fish, very, very good. Come and have a look, very, very good. The Sea of Galilee hosts a range of fish, some up to 12 to 13 pounds in weight. This account is just an amazing example of if we involve Jesus in our lives, how different our lives can be. Sunday morning, love you. Tuesday morning, love you. I want to love you every day. Tuesday, Wednesday, love you. Monday morning, love you. I want to love you every day. Just like Peter, God wants us to love him with everything we have and to love others too. We saw Peter deny Jesus three times, but here in this historical account, we see Peter professing his love for Jesus three times. God always wants to forgive us and he always gives us that opportunity and he wants us to forgive others too. Jesus also said, tend my sheep. This means that we should be looking after God's people, leading them and teaching them. And what other better way than to show God's love than to give them a card? So draw some fish on a piece of plastic, cardboard or even a potato. Cut it out and use a variety of colours to create many fish stamped on a piece of card. Write a message showing God's love for them. Hi, this is Rosamond. I hope you found that video interesting. Um, it shows um, the impact that shoeboxes have. They're not just a shoebox, not just a toy, uh, a box of toys, but they are a means of introducing the gospel to many people. So I would encourage you to pack a shoebox. I've, um, I've packed two this year. Um, and I'm putting a list on the website, on the uh, WhatsApp groups, about um, things that you can put in. Uh, so please read that carefully. You can cover a box. I'm afraid I haven't got boxes this year because I'm actually hoping that many people will do it online uh, in view of the COVID situation. But if you do a box, um, Please read the instructions carefully about what to put in and what not to put in. And please put a rubber band around it. <laughs> so you'd be scrabbling around at the last minute. Um, and if you need labels, I've got labels, but they need to come to the church by mid-November. I'll, I'll put out a, a more specific date by, uh, soon. But also, um, it's possible to do an online box. Um, I've done one for somebody, and it was really easy. And I was so encouraged by the... Um, interesting gifts that they could put in. I, I guess they buy in bulk and um, it's easy for them, but uh, it costs 20 pounds, which includes the five pound um, cost of getting the box to its destination. For an extra five pounds, you can donate towards The Greatest Journey. So there's a great choice of gifts for boys and girls of different ages. Um, and if anybody needs help, and hasn't got anybody to help them do it online, I'm very happy to do a bo an online box if you tell me who you want to give it to, the age, and you pay me. <laughs> so I would encourage you, at this time, COVID is really affecting so many other people um, in, in countries, poor countries. Um, and these boxes are given to anybody and everybody, no, any religion or no religion. So please consider, and thank you very much. My dear brothers and sisters, as we come to pray, um, I do want us to be praying about, yes, the needs around our church. Of course, there are also uh, conflicts going, or, going on uh, in, in parts of our world. Uh, there are great difficulties for brothers and sisters in Christ. And yes, we want to be praying for these. And I want to encourage you to do that in your own time. We've got brothers and sisters that we know in Armenia and Azerbaijan, who are on opposite sides of a conflict. All of them are believers in Jesus. So we want to be praying for, for all of these things.
for our own needs, the needs of our families, for the needs of our church, certainly for the areas of conflict, for those who are being persecuted for their faith. So many things that need prayer, and certainly for our government as well. So I do want to encourage you to please take the time, uh, today in fact, and just make some time, just to spend time in the Lord, bringing these things to the Lord in prayer. But in these moments, I want us to, to look at a few things that we are focusing on as a church, or have been over the last weeks or so. The first of these will be something that Rosamond has spoken about, and that of course is Operation Christmas Child, and that is getting the gospel into the hands of children along with a Christmas present. So please pray for that, and I will lead us in a few moments. Also, a reminder about the harvest, that we've got the Ealing Food Bank we're collecting money for, and Open Doors. Ealing Food Bank is local, and Open Doors is coming alongside our believers who are being persecuted for their faith around the world, and all the monies raised will be split between these two charities. So please do give to these. Um, we will keep um, the books open to receive money until the end of the month. So please let us give generously. And of course, in the weeks to come also, we want you to donate to the Operation Christmas Child or make up a shoebox. And also, um, if you need details about where to donate for harvest, that's up on the screen. So let's pray for that in these in these moments lord we thank you for what we've seen about the operation christmas child lord may we give that the gospel might go forth go forth in the areas where people will receive these christmas gifts the greatest gift of christmas is not a present it is jesus so thank you for that um, yeah for that opportunity and also for the Ealing uh, food bank as well as for open doors we want to pray that you would bless their ministry and their work Lord, help us to give generously, that the hungry might be fed, and that our brothers and sisters who have been persecuted might be encouraged. And through it all, Lord, may your gospel go forth and your kingdom be extended, we pray. In Jesus' name. And on to something we started uh, promoting last week, and that is the reminder that on Saturday, we have got Halloween, the 31st of October, and we're doing an outreach. We're calling it the Light Event. So we want to proclaim to our children and community that, that Jesus is the light of the world and that whoever follows him will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And so at the church, there are these bags of hope that we want you to hand out to your neighborhood children, to the kids at the school, uh, it's got a wonderful tract inside. It's got some sweets inside. It's got some information about our church inside. And let's get these things out. Friends, won't you take some? If you aren't able to get to the church, speak to myself or to Andrea, and we will bring them to you. So please take some of these uh, during the course of the day or during the week. Contact me or Andrea or others in the church, and we'll get some of these bags to you. So please take 10 or more, and let's. Let's be on mission. Let us be on mission. And of course, we also have the light event. And let me just uh, increase the size of this so that you can see it. So that we want to invite primary school children into the church to the light event on the Saturday from 6 till 7.30. People need to book. Please go to the church. There is a, a, a page where you can book in. And let us invite the children of our community into this event, as they won't necessarily be able to go uh, trick-or-treating like they once did because of the coronavirus. Here is a precious opportunity to make Jesus known around our community, around our local schools, and indeed as an outreach event in our church. So shall we pray for this? Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to, to reach out to the children and the families in our community. We want to pray that you will open hearts and lives, Lord, to the wonder of the gospel, that people will know and respond to the fact that you truly are the light of life, and that whoever follows you will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And I did misquote, you are not, <laughs> yes, you are the light of life, but you are the light of the world. So Lord, thank you for that wonderful truth. We pray that we would shed this light abroad. 
as we reach out, Lord, to our children, to our families and our community. We pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, amen. And let us be about our Father's business in these exciting days. The Lord helping us. This next song is a recognition of who our God is, as was in Psalm 104. And let's just sing with glory given, all glory to God, the King of Kings. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. It's great to be with you. Uh, this week, we conclude our series looking at the parables and miracles of Jesus. And we end off in the last chapter of the, the Gospel of John, the good news that John writes. The week after, that's the week following, and for a few weeks following, we will be looking at the book of Joshua, the first five chapters, I think it is. So please do join us for that. But as we come to God's word, shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for your wonderful, marvelous, precious and life-giving word. And again today, we pray that you would come and speak to us. Reveal yourself to us, Jesus. Where we have failed, we pray that this would be the day of restoration. We have moved away from your calling upon our lives. We want to pray that this would be the day of recommissioning. So, Lord God, come and be glorified. Come and speak. 
that we might walk in your ways, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So please turn, if you will, in your Bibles to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. And again, the reminder right at the end of the book, the second last chapter and last couple of verses. Why are these miracles given to us? Why does John write this gospel? Well, he writes about the signs or the miracles. And of course, we're looking at another one today. They are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ or Jesus is the Messiah, the one sent from God, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life, that is eternal life in his name. I pray that this message, that this book would be of an encouragement to you. And again, let's not forget that there are these profound miracles that we've looked at over the weeks, haven't we? We've looked at Jesus turning water into wine. We've looked at the healing of a paralyzed man at the pool of Bethesda. We've looked at the feeding of the 5,000 men, so probably more than 10,000 people. We've looked at how Jesus opened the eyes of a man who was born blind. We've looked at the raising of Lazarus from the dead last week. And through all of these things, we've also, you know, we've also journeyed through some of the I am statements of Jesus, where Jesus said, I am the bread of life relating to the feeding of the people. Jesus said before Abraham was, I am, speaking of the fact that he existed before Abraham even, the father of the faith. Jesus claimed that he is the light of the world. He said that I am the good shepherd. He said last week with the raising of Lazarus, I am the resurrection and the life. And you know, the person who dies believing in Jesus will never die. So do you believe this? And today we get on to the final chapter, chapter 21, where we look at the miraculous catch of fish and around that, the restoration of Simon Peter. An amazing pianist, uh, Andor Foles, um, was a Hungarian pianist. He is now dead. But at about the age of 16, as a young, as a young boy, a teenager, uh, a skilled pianist by that age, he was having an, inc an incredibly difficult year, many crises, many challenges. And in the midst of this year, in the midst of his struggles, one of the world's most renowned pianists at that time came to Budapest in, in Hungary. And that was a pianist by the name of Emil von Sauer, German, he was famous for his incredible abilities as a musician, as a pianist. But uh, Emil von Sauer was also the last pupil of the, the, the great composer Franz Liszt. And von Sauer asked that Andor Folds, as a 16-year-old, come and play for him. And Folds obliged and played some of the most beautiful and difficult pieces by Bach and Beethoven and Schumann. And when he had finished, von Sauer walked over to Andor and kissed him on the forehead and said, My son, when I was your age, I became a student of Liszt. And he kissed me on the forehead after my first lesson, saying, Take good care of this kiss. It comes from the man who taught me. It comes from Beethoven, who gave it to me after hearing me play. And I've waited for many, many years to pass this kiss on to pass on the sacred heritage to somebody who I believe deserves it. Take good care of this kiss. It comes from Baton, who gave it, gave it to me after hearing me play. What a beautiful thing. And I really hope that Under Foles passed on that kiss, that kiss of affirmation, that kiss of blessing, that kiss of encouragement to somebody else. And so on to our passage. And it, 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 it is a passage about encouragement. 
And by the way, let me say that it starts right at the beginning with the calling of, 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 of Simon Peter to serve the Lord. Simon and his brother Andrew, they were out fishing. And we know the story where Jesus told them to, to cast the nets onto the other side of the boat. And we have this account in Matthew, Mark, and indeed in Luke's gospel. And they, they had this incredible, incredible catch of fish. And in the midst of this comes the call. And, and these words are up on the screen. The, the words of Jesus come, Jesus said to, 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 to Simon Peter, to Andrew, to the others, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And at once they left their nets and they followed Jesus. Aren't they amazing words? At once they left their nets and followed him. In Luke's gospel, it's stated that they are not to be afraid. Don't fear. From now on, you will catch men. And so they left everything and they followed Jesus. In a sense, like, like uh, von Sauer placing this kiss upon the forehead of, 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 of Andor, Andor Folds. Here we have, in a sense, Jesus placing this kiss of blessing and of calling upon the forehead of, 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 of Simon Peter, of the other disciples, as he said, come and follow me. And you will not only catch fish, no, 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 you will catch men for my glory. What an amazing calling. And friends, we know that there was great failure. Simon Peter, in great bravado, said, even though the others might desert you, Lord, I never will. I will even die with you. And Jesus turns and looks at him. And this at the Last Supper. I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. And friends, Peter denies the Lord Jesus Christ. We fail in remarkable ways and Friends, one of the more humorous uh, stories about failure relates to a time of great tragedy, certainly the Second World War, when um, the Germans uh, invaded Russia. And the, the, the Russians try to come up with a way to, to, um, to, 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 to fight back. And, and, and they had worked to, to, to create um, dogs who would take bombs under the German tanks and blow them up. Yes, at the loss of the life of a dog. And of course, I find that as a dog lover, a, a, a terrible thing. But this thing was an unmitigated failure. It was a disaster because the dogs were trained with static tanks because the Russians didn't have enough oil or, to waste. And so when they saw these moving tanks, they didn't know what to do. And so many of the dogs ran back to the Russian trenches, blowing up the Russians. Even worse, the dogs were trained on tanks that used diesel, which were the Russian tanks. The German tanks used petrol. So by going by smell, they weren't familiar with the German tanks. And so they ran off and, interestingly enough, blew up a few of their own Russian tanks. And so this was an absolute disaster. It was a great setback to the Russians, and they had to find other ways to try and win the war. Friends, back to this where Jesus warns Peter, says, Peter, that I've prayed for you. Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, and I've prayed for you, Peter, that your faith will hold fast. I remember the words of Jesus. I'm sure Peter did, that if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and follow me, taking up his cross daily. And here we have Jesus saying, no, Peter, you're not going to take up your cross and deny yourself. No, you are going to deny me. You will deny three times that you know me. And then when Jesus had been arrested, Peter was uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the courtyard warming himself by the fire. And three times he was asked, you're a Galilean, surely you're with Jesus. And even with, with swearing, Peter says, I don't know this man, Jesus. Now we have this 
poignant account in Luke 22, and I've got some of the words up on the screen. Poignant words. Before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. In verse 60 of that same chapter, Peter just said to the final person that confront, confronted him, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And just as he was speaking, the scriptures tell us the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. The Lord was there. Just as the Lord is there in your life and in mine today. The Lord looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And Peter went outside and wept bitterly. The absolute failure. Friends, what about you? I know I had a story about the Russians and the dogs where it was in some ways quite humorous. Certainly not at the time. Perhaps you are like a Peter, where there is no humor in your failures, where you have denied the Lord, where you have done things that you are not proud of and the Lord is not proud of, where you feel that you have blown it. How can the Lord possibly use someone like me? Where you feel like it is time to give up. Well, let's read what happens. John chapter 21, verse 1. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. That is the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus. And by the way, that word Didymus means possibly twin. So he might have been one of a twin. Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter said to them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. My friends, are your present actions, the things that you're doing in your life, the direction of your life now, at odds with the original calling? Remember the original calling that I, that, I, that I read earlier, that I will, that you will be fishers of men. And what has happened to Simon and to the others is they're now at the Sea of Galilee, not fishing for men. They are fishing for fish. Are they going back to the, their old way of life, their old way of existing? Have they failed so miserably in not being at the cross with Jesus, whereby they realize that that, God can't possibly use me anymore. I have denied the Lord. I have failed him. I have messed up. I have sinned. And the Lord's hand of calling is no longer upon my life. Perhaps you are like a Peter who is brokenhearted, who has wept bitterly over the failures, over the lost opportunities, and you are still stuck in that place. And this failure and this sin is still guiding your present actions. They caught nothing. And early in the morning, we are told, early in the morning, verse 4, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not recognize that it was Jesus because they were out in the sea. And he called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. And he said, throw your net. Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. And the disciple whom Jesus loved, that is John, said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net of fish. For they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. And then verse 9 on the screen. When they landed, they saw a fire burning coals. They saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. How beautiful this is. That Jesus starts off with 
just fellowship. Fellowship. He meets with his disciples and he has a meal. He prepares this meal for them. There is no condemnation. There is no finger pointing. All Jesus does is he just has a meal with them. There is fellowship. There is brotherhood. There is companionship. Friends, right now, wherever you are seated, the Lord is alongside you. He is right there. And he simply wants to have fellowship with you. To, in a sense, to place his arm around you, to affirm you, to renew the relationship with you, to break bread with you. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Because, of course, these were men and they, they are going to eat a bit. They're going to have great fellowship together. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. You can see these are, these are typical fishermen where they even count how many fish there were, 153. And Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, well, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. And this was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Isn't that amazing that even though these disciples knew that Jesus was raised, yet there was still this brokenness that needed to be touched, that needed to be healed. There was still this disconnection from the calling that the Lord had placed upon them that needed to be reaffirmed and reinstated. So after the friendship and the banter and the, and the, and the joy of being together as a brotherhood, around the fish, around the bread, oh, that must have been wonderful. Jesus gets aside with Simon. So friends like you and like me, yeah, we might have all the banter with the others, but at times Jesus just wants to get aside with us on our own. To, to, to forgive us. To renew his calling in our lives. To set us back upon the right path. But friends, whatever is hindering this, be it a relationship, a relationship that has failed, or a wrong relationship today, whatever it might be, it could be a career path, where you are no longer where you think the Lord wants you to be. Whatever it might be, just hear these wonderful words of the Lord, not just to Simon Peter in the text, but to you, to you. And so these amazing words. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Wonder what these are. Is it you love me more than these disciples? Because perhaps he's hinting at the fact that, that Simon Peter in his bravado had said, wow, the others might leave you, but I never will. In a sense saying, Lord, I love you more than them. Or is it more than fishing, these fish? Perhaps it's both. You love me more than these. And Simon says, Lord, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus answered, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, Son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. What is quite remarkable about this is, yes, the conversation probably took place in Aramaic. The Bible is written by John in Greek. 
But I think Greek puts across the nuance of what Jesus is saying. And it does it quite beautifully. And I've highlighted the words up on the screen that you can see it, hopefully. Simon, son of John, says Jesus to him, do you love me? And there Jesus uses the word in the Greek, agape. Do you really love me sacrificially, Peter? And whoever you are listening to this, watching this message, how, how much do you love the Lord? And Simon's answer is, Lord, I phileo you. Lord, you know that I phileo you. That basically means I love you like a precious brother. I love you like a, a, precious, a precious member of the family. So there are these two standards that, 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 that John highlights in his gospel. Do you agape me? Do you love me unconditionally? And Peter says, no. Jesus, I love you like a brother. And again, Jesus says to him, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? Do you agape me? And again, we have the answer from Peter, Lord, no, I love you like a brother. The third time Jesus says to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Jesus in here, John changes the words, not, not agape, but phileo you. Do you love me, Peter, like a brother? And, and Peter says, yes, Lord, I love you like a brother. Isn't it amazing how Jesus brings things down to the point where Simon Peter can understand this? There is also a little bit of an admonition here, a little bit of a, a, a I wouldn't say a, a recognition of, of who Jesus is dealing with. Jesus doesn't call him Peter the Rock. Remember Jesus changed Simon's name to Peter? You are Peter, you are the Rock. And on this rock, I will establish my church. Uh, not speaking about him being the Pope, but about on the truth of Christ as the Savior of the world. So this rock is broken. This rock is shattered. Jesus doesn't call him Peter. No, no, Jesus calls him by the name that his mother and father gave him. Simon, do you love me? Simon, do you love me? Simon, do you love me? Friends, maybe you don't feel like a Peter. You don't feel like a rock because you have shattered just as Peter did. Your bravado, your pronouncements, your hopes have just been dashed. But Jesus asks you the question just as he asked Simon. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And how wonderful that... Simon knows that Jesus knows our hearts. Lord, you know all things, and he does. You know that I love you. You could say, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you, but my love is broken. My love has failed. I need, Lord, I need to be, I need to do better. I need to be better. And then verse 18, the Lord brings to, to Simon to Peter, a, 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 an affirmation that is at once glorious, but friends, at, one, at once it is also something that is very, very chilling. And not necessarily for what it's required for you, but this was what God had said to Peter. Feed my sheep, says the Lord. Feed my sheep. I tell you, I tell you the truth. That when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. And here we are told, Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he said to him, follow me. And this is speaking about the fact that at one point he dressed himself and when he is older, somebody else will dress him in the garments that he will wear to his execution. In fact, we are told, and we don't know the, the absolute truth of this, that, that Simon Peter, a changed man after this reaffirmation of his call, he's reinstated, didn't find it in himself to be 
crucified in the same way as Jesus, and apparently also to be crucified upside down. Now, we don't know whether this is true or not, but it seems as if, if Peter, he too was crucified just as his Lord was. And through it, he glorified the Lord. So, my friend, as we close, Jesus is there like that Hungarian pianist to come and kiss you. His call is upon your life. Do you receive that blessing? And I know that you may have failed. We have all failed the Lord in so many ways. And yet the call is still there. Follow me. I want to make you a fisher of men. And this question, do you truly love me? And I pray that your answer would be like Peter's. Lord, you know that I love you. Lord, you know that I love you. And then the call of Jesus to Peter, feed my sheep. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep. What is the calling that the Lord has given you? Above all, it is to follow Jesus. It is to be fishers of men. And it is to feed the faithful. The Lord. So if you truly love the Lord, though your love has failed, though your love is broken, won't you hear this affirmation of God? calling of the Lord upon your life. Follow me. Follow me. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this amazing, amazing passage of, of, of affirmation, this passage of hope, this passage of reinstating a man like Peter. Thank you that this, this passage is also about, Lord, you wanting to reinstate us to the calling that you have upon our lives. Jesus, we surrender our all to you. Forgive us for our failings. Forgive us, Lord, for our rebellion. Jesus, we accept your calling. We accept your anointing. We accept your kiss of blessing. Lord, and we seek you helping us, Lord, to obey the call to follow you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Help us to love you more. Help us, Lord, to walk in the way that you want us to walk. Grant us the courage we need. Grant us the wisdom. Grant us the resources we need, Lord, to follow you in all faithfulness. And we pray this in Jesus' wonderful name. God bless you, my friends. If anybody needs prayer, needs help, won't you, won't you please contact me or somebody else that you know within our church. And uh, I'm going to hand over to Johnny as we close our service with a, a glorious uh, final song. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you as you follow Jesus. Amen. blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking Veils his lovely face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ, this solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Sinking sand. His 
His oath is covenant, His blood supports me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, He then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground. place to put our trust and our hope. Christ, the solid rock. Heavenly Father, as our time this morning draws to a close, I pray that you will be with each one of us this week, that you will comfort those who are in need of comfort, that you will be company, Lord, and strength to those who are lonely or who are weak. Lord, I pray that your spirit will fill each one of us so that this week will be lived for you, for your purposes and guided by you and your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for what we've learned this morning. Help us to apply it in our lives. And Lord, be with us in the conversation that follows the service. Lord, will you um, give us the right topics of conversation? Will you give us things to pray for for each other, Lord, and lead us in that as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And um, let's not forget how great our God is. Let's not forget how solid our rock is. That is where our hope and our trust is eternally. As we close this morning, uh, why don't we share the words of the grace with each other? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much for joining us this morning. God bless you. Mm -hmm.